Hello, good morning. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's eight o'clock on Wednesday the 22nd of March. I'm reading Common Worship Daily Prayer, Morning Prayer for Lent, which you'll find in the book towards the beginning. After prayer during the day, the two sections of morning and evening prayer, we're in the seasonal section, Morning Prayer Lent. Online at Arima's Daily Prayer and the Church of England's website, downloadable as apps for Apple or Android devices, such as I'm using here on my tablet. You're welcome to join me in the building, 8 and 6, if you're passing. If you're coming from any distance, get in touch perhaps beforehand, because every so often, as indeed tomorrow morning, I won't be in. I'm uh, dropping the car off an MHG in service. But uh, otherwise, 8 and 6 most days. Uh, you can join by Zoom, the code on Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook, and I am recording the audio to upload onto my Dominic Global YouTube channel, which you can find at your leisure. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love, according to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion, mercy to you, be praise and glory for ever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. A song of Penitence, verses from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you are justified in your sentence and righteous in your judgment. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. <clears throat> Give me again the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The Psalms appointed this morning are numbers 63 and 90. You'll find those at the back of the book in the Psalter, if you're following there, 63 and 90. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. O God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul is a thirst for you. My flesh also faints for you, as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. <clears throat> your loving kindness is better than life itself, and so my lips shall praise you. I will bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My soul clings to you, your right hand shall hold me fast. But those who seek my soul to destroy it shall go down to the depths of the earth. Let them fall by the edge of the sword, and become a portion for jackals. <clears throat> but the king shall rejoice in God, all those who swear by him shall be glad, for the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. <coughs> Lord, 
my God, in you I take refuge. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth or the earth and the world were formed, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday, which passes like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid at your wrathful indignation. You have set our misdeeds before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. Our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are three score years and ten, or if our strength endures, even four score. Yet the sum of them is but labour and sorrow, for they soon pass away and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath and your indignation like those who fear you? So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Turn again, O Lord, how long will you delay? <clears throat> Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us with your loving kindness in the morning, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Give us gladness for the days you have afflicted us and for the years in which we have seen adversity. Show your servants your works and let your glory be over their children. May the gracious favour of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper our handiwork, O prosper the work of our hands. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. O Lord my God, in you I take refuge. Drawing past our first reading to the Song of Manasseh, we're following electronically, turn back in the book to morning prayer during Lent. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God the Most High, the Almighty, Lord Almighty and God of our ancestors, you who made heaven and earth in all their glory. All things tremble with awe at your presence before your great and mighty power. Immeasurable and unsearchable is your promised mercy, for you are God Most High. You are full of compassion, long-suffering, and very merciful, and you relent at human suffering. O God, according to your great goodness, you have promised forgiveness for repentance to those who have sinned against you. <clears throat> the sins I have committed against you are more in number than the sands of the sea. I am not worthy to look up to the height of heaven because of the multitude of my iniquities. And now I bend the knee of my heart before you, imploring your kindness upon me. I have sinned, O God, I have sinned, and I acknowledge my transgressions. Unworthy as I am, you will save me according to your great mercy. <clears throat> for all the host of heaven sings your praise, and your glory is forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God the Most High, the Almighty. Our first Bible reading, Jeremiah 18, from 13. You'll find Jeremiah... Uh, towards the beginning of the prophecy section of the Hebrew Scriptures. So if you open your Bible two-thirds of the way through, if you've got both covenants in your printed edition, you should be just between the first and the second. Moving back towards the beginning, through Micah and the Minor Prophets, you should arrive at Jeremiah just before Isaiah. We're looking for the large number 18 at the head of the paragraph and small numbers in the text 13 onwards, verse 13. Jeremiah 18 from 13. Online, just scroll back a little from the canticle we've just read, the Song of Manasseh. Therefore, thus says the Lord, ask among the nations who has heard the like of this. The virgin Israel has done the most horrible thing. Does the snow of Lebanon leave the crags of Syrian? Do the mountain waters run dry, the cold, the cold flowing streams? But my people have forgotten me. They burn offerings to a delusion. They have stumbled in their ways in the ancient roads and have gone into bypaths, not the highway, making their land a terror, a thing to be hissed at forever. All who pass by it are horrified and shake their heads. Like the wind from the east, I will scatter them before the enemy. I will show them my back, not my face, on the day of their calamity. Then they said, Come, let us make plots against Jeremiah, for instruction shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come, let us bring charges against him, and let us not heed any of his words. <coughs> Give heed to me, O Lord, and listen to what my adversaries say. Is evil a recompense for good? Yet they have dug a pit for my life. Remember how I stood before you to speak good for them, to turn away your wrath from them. Therefore give their children over to famine, hurl them out to the power of the sword, let their wives become childless and widowed. May their men meet death by pestilence, their youths be slain by the sword in battle. May a cry be heard from their houses when you bring the marauder suddenly upon them. 
and they have dug a pit to catch me and laid snares for my feet. Yet you, O Lord, know all their plotting to kill me. <clears throat> do, not forgive, do not forgive their iniquity. Do not blot out their sin from your sight. Let them be tripped up before you. Deal with them while you are angry. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> this is an excellent example of uh, poor Jeremiah. Um, first of all, saying what he has to say, and <laughs> then feeling the rebound, um, the reaction to uh, what he has said. So you can imagine going out into a, a busy city centre street where people are just happily buying stuff in the run-up to Mothering Sunday, let's say, or Christmas, and they're all just having a high old time. I don't know, they might be St. Patrick's Day, and they're buying themselves a, a few tinnies on the way. And uh, he's telling them that you've done a horrible thing. You know, whilst there is snow on the mountains and the springs, the mountain springs provide the streams, and it's just a normal course of events, like the sun going up and going down. <clears throat> it just happens, and yet God's people, it should be as natural for God's people to serve and follow and worship and live with the true God and God's ways, but they don't. They've done a horrible thing. They burn offerings to a delusion. So they are worshipping the idols of those amongst whom they live. <clears throat> In general, the majority are doing that. And uh, they have stumbled in their ways in the ancient roads and they got caught up in sort of these funny little side roads. Their land has been made a horror. So just as today we don't live as we ought and so we've got climate breakdown, we've uh, lost tremendous quantities of wildlife. <clears throat> We're on the edge of the world not being able to sustain human or any life um, before very long. And uh, that land, our land has become a horror because we're not living as we ought. So God's people have done a horrible thing and uh, the land has become a horror as a result, uh, then as now. And so we're going to be scattered. They're, they were going to be scattered. And that was Jeremiah's message. Live right and things will go well, not only in terms of the environment, but in terms of your relations with the, the local powers, the, the neighbouring nations <coughs> and your own civilization and community. It will be well. It will be like God's city, a new Jerusalem and not an old, corrupt, oppressive uh, society or community. And so the people who were saying this to you cross with him and they spit, they cross, they swear, just as we would if we were standing on a high street telling people they need to sort their um, lives out when they're just trying to enjoy themselves. <coughs> people don't want to be told to go on a diet or um, to learn a new thing or to take a balanced view before making a decision, etc., etc. They just want to go with it. And... Uh, <laughs> They say, let us make plots against Jeremiah. And uh, you can tell how cross he is because he says, um, deal with them while you are angry. When uh, in the Hebrew scriptures and elsewhere, people ask God to be merciful, they say, no, we know we've done wrong. We know you're right to be angry, but please don't judge us while you're cross. And uh, that's just so contemporary, it seems to me. You know, go to sleep on it, take some rest, sort out what you're thinking before you react or respond. Otherwise, we may regret it. And uh, there's just as he calls out to God, he's so cross and angry and broken that he's trying to get these people to see there must be many teachers of all, of all sorts who are just so cross that the, their coaching just hasn't paid dividends. They're, they're athletes, they're artists, they're children, they're um, adults with learning difficulties, whatever it is, just aren't listening to what they're suggesting. They're aged parents, <clears throat> their instruction, their direction, it's good counsel, it's wise, it's balanced, it's based on evidence, but they won't get it in Jeremiah's. <laughs> properly cross. So here's to all who are trying to make progress in the hearts and minds and attitudes of other people, and that's just not happening. To John 10, 11 to 21, our second reading. The Gospel of John, so this is towards the beginning of the Second Covenant, two-thirds of the way through, or printed Holy Bible, you'll find the um, also known as the New Testament, though I tend to prefer um, Greek and Hebrew, or first and second, as it seems to be less disparaging towards the majority of the text, which is uh, Jewish scripture. We come to John, Gospel of John. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John open the Second Covenant. We look at the large number 10 at the head of the paragraph this time, chapter 10. We look at the small numbers in the text. The verse is 11 to 21. Scroll onto it if you're online. John 10 from 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. The wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. 
I am the good shepherd, I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold, I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd, for this reason the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. Again the Jews were divided because of these words. Many of them were saying he has a demon and is out of his mind, why listen to him? Others were saying these are not the words of one who has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? <clears throat> so we've got a continuation from yesterday of this idea of Jesus being the good shepherd. I say continuation of yesterday. I'm just scrolling back to make sure. Yeah, so we're talking about entering the sheepfold. <clears throat> and unless you enter by the gate, then you're a thief and a bandit. Uh, and now we're turning to the idea of Jesus being the good shepherd. <coughs> the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep and that may be the case for um, shepherds, agricultural people looking after flocks of sheep and goats <coughs> goat herd, shepherds um, they, they may indeed go after a wolf a bear, a lion who has come to take or anyone else, anything else that has come to take their animals <clears throat> whether they are theirs or whether they belong to somebody else. Um, and Jesus is making that connection. He is hinting, we reading this with hindsight, know that he did die on the cross and uh, was restored to life. So we think, Jesus, I am the good shepherd. First of all, the word I am is God's name. As Moses uh, said to, uh, God said to Moses at the burning bush, say, I am, that's my name, and my title is the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then Jesus goes on, the hired hand, who is not the shepherd, doesn't own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and runs away. <clears throat> I'm not sure whether he's referring particularly to anybody there. Um, is it um, a side swipe? The temple authorities who aren't standing up for what is true, right and just, but allowing the wolf, perhaps the um, battalion, the, the century that were in Rome at the time, the Roman um, occupation, they might even have had a wolf as their... Um, symbol or motto on their um, idol, their banner, who knows, but uh, that may be the case. So the wolf has come and is scattering the sheep. It could just be another metaphor for evil, antichrist, non-church, non-believing, those who don't want to be told what to do. And uh, again, we have the I lay down my life for the sheep halfway through, connecting not just the idea of the shepherd with God, which is tradition through the Hebrew scriptures, but also with Jesus making that connection that he is, because he says, I am, that's God's name, um, which we might pick up on, might have been why they were crossed with him for blaspheming. Though Jesus, not necessarily in John, but elsewhere, speaks of himself as being the son of man, to avoid using those sorts of blasphemous terms. No one takes my life from me, I lay it down on my own accord, to take it up again. Very interesting, slightly later gospel, em enabling and em empowering, uh, uh, attributing to Jesus, divine power to give and take life again linking with that calling himself i am so that the theology is developing jesus isn't just an ordinary chap who's standing against injustice but there are these hints beginning to appear from this religious community's texts of uh, a more mystical approach yes jesus is a historical figure but it's been laced with the idea of the divine and the conclusion here just as after jeremiah's speech We've got those that believe and those that don't. Though Jeremiah, the majority, didn't. And here we've got some saying he has a demon and others saying you know, he's opening people's eyes. And again, that's that sort of um, messianic miracle stuff. Are we talking about eyes being opened so that people can biologically or clinically see again with their eyeballs? Or are we talking about hearts and minds being given vision and hope and uh, understanding? And I would suggest it's both and. To the responsory then, back in morning prayer during Lent. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, O my God, in you I trust. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, in you I hope all the day long, O my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, O my God, in you I trust. The Song of Zechariah. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old 
to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Source on their since one in three, three in one, we come to you at the beginning of this day and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We thank you for gathering us up as a shepherd and those of us that are Gentile by background, being brought in as those who are not of this fold into your protection and care. As we have been invited to pass through that wooden gate, the wooden gate of the cross, and stand under the, your staff and rod and use that for our own protection and determination as we make our progress through the valley in the shadow of our brokenness, hurt and past keeping our eyes set and fixed on what is before. We pray that you will use us and make us through the day ahead and that uh, we will be enabled to speak out as we ought in whatever circumstances, but with love and grace. And uh, perhaps for some of us we are cross, but we ask that you will help us to be merciful as we pray you are merciful towards us. From the World Council of Churches, prayers over this week for Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. We are thankful for the faithful witness of Christians during times of persecution and for those who have survived times of occupation. We pray for the healing of old wounds remaining from 20th century struggles. <coughs> from Christian Action Surgeon Education, apparently it's World Water Day. We ask God for progress in achieving sustainable development with gold to provide clean water and sanitation for all by 2030, just uh, seven years' time. Uh, we bring, please bring help to the 2.2 billion people today without access to these and help governments and others to resolve the water, global water crisis. Uh, it's not just governments, it's us as communities um, to recognise our neighbours, even those that we traditionally don't like, um, have as much right to water as we do. And those of us who use a great deal um, need to recognise that we don't necessarily need to use so much. <clears throat> and uh, we pray that the international community um, will provide a steer for those nations where there is outrageous injustice, where there are people on one side of the wall with their swimming pools and green gardens and on the other with their hardly enough to drink, watching their crops and olive plantations dry out. May God be merciful. From Green Christian. The UN Water Conference will take place at the UN headquarters in New York from today till the 24th of March, co-hosted by Tajikistan and the Netherlands. The Water Conference may result, must result in bold water action agenda given the world's lifeblood and commitment it, reserves. it deserves, says Antonio Guterres, Secretary General for the United Nations. The outcome of the conference will be a summary of the proceedings and new commitments, pledged and actions by governments and all stakeholders towards achieving that sustainable development goal, number six, and other water-related goals and targets. Well, we add those two prayers together from C-A-R-E and uh, Green Christian and add our Amen. The Anglican Communion has five marks of mission, the fifth of which is our concern for the environment. O God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. In our benefice cycle of prayer. <clears throat> On Wednesdays we pray for all who teach. We're coming back to that teaching thing. As Jeremiah was trying to teach and getting frustrated, we pray for teachers, especially those heads who are oppressed by the possibility of a bad Ofsted result. We pray for support, protection, and uh, for ways and means of uh, smoothing, helping people travel through that uh, process of uh, grading and its results. We pray that people who watch and follow will have an understanding that it's a snapshot, that it um, lies down, lies in statistics. It's just a particular measure on a particular day in a particular way. There may be plenty else going on. So just a, 
examples where we are here. We have poverty and privilege in our schools, tiny schools of sort of 80 to 100 youngsters. It only needs two or three to either be taken out on a holiday or coming from families in such chaos that they don't turn up to uh, affect um, results for attendance. And uh, that can lead, you know, if children just need to be kept upright during the day and uh, keeping, uh, allowing them to get to the loo right and feeding right and not stealing or being hit or hurt others, you know, there may not be any time left to actually teach. And if it's the teaching that's measured on its own, then the school bidding to be failing, even though it might have made great strides and inroads into helping those young people, preparing them for uh, getting through the day and preparing them to live tomorrow. So, uh, we thank God for all teachers and we thank God too for the apparent progress that seems to be being made in terms of relations um, between um, teachers and their uh, higher paymasters, namely us, I guess, as a community. We pray that we'd be merciful in relation to what we expect our government to achieve uh, in terms of uh, terms and conditions for those who teach. In our benefit cycle of prayer, we thank you for our church wardens looking after St. Peter Holton, namely John and Chris, St. Peter's Wenist and Jonathan. We pray that, uh, I think it's Chris, of uh, Chris and Anne, uh, may step up and, uh, oh, Colin, uh, that he'll step up and uh, help <coughs> as warden. We pray for um, trebling of the size of the PCC in Bramfield, thanking God for uh, Dawn, Helen and uh, Ginny looking after that church. <coughs> We pray too for the creation of a 10 strong PCC for Blyford and uh, we pray that Alison is able to step back and others are drawn forward. We ask your blessing on Trish and Mike at St Peter's Thorrington and the others that work there. We thank you for the uh, life that uh, they seem to be experiencing and feeling again in that place. We pray that it does bring forward other people to help and increase money and rejuvenation of life uh, around that beacon, that totem of what it means to be um, a person at, in that place at this time um, as a mark of your presence with them and us. We pray to you for those in the extra role. We've got names at Halton, Jill, Helen, Anthony, Dot, Betty, Mary, Diane, Marjorie, Jane, Gillian, Linda, Eric, Phyllis, Edith, Janet, Jim and Jackie, Weniston without Alison, but also Margaret, Goldsmith, Goldson, Bloomfield. We pray for Angela, Mary, Moira, Francis, Valerie, Dorothy, Jane and Robert, Heather, Thriller, Colin, Jennifer, Felicity, Vivian, Graham, Ruth, John, Sandy, David, Diana, Joanna Jean, Suzanne, Clive, Francis, Anne and Colin. We thank you for all that they do, keeping your churches and the life they represent going. We pray that you draw more in. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pan Hore Mid Yashana Rakabada Hama Shukana Kadira Bash Baramashan Sarada Mahalopasan Yakashti of Ramas Bahana Mikusharat. Chantiri Masma Rosha Kadibra was Bahosham Sarakati Lash Baramas. Jogadam Hadu Rosham Sidikati Brabus Brahosha Sadaka Badiana Ramas Barakash was Arakashianasa. Tahi Matan Mosh Badurosha Saran Bash Bahani Kadira Kadi and Hadi Pushan to Rosha Sabarabas and Mujush has a Mayakash. Chakushati Ramash Badohani Rakata Masa Mujurakashi Kadimish Baramaba and Rosha Sadaka. Tahi Ramas Murusha Sidibati Mujurus to Hana Bisham Jeraka Vimish was on Yerafas. Chakushani Rahan is Baramas Brahata Sam Yakash and Miyaha and Yerakash in Fazamara. The new to an emergent here, which in Syria Misha Ramehu and Sagama and Yanesha, Chipuma Hotel for Snatin, Persamatash and Sadad at Hariamas Madonuras. Can hear Kadiamas Madosha Sara and Yeraman, Jim as a person to Shasa and Hari Bukhosa and the rest of the Mamma and Nursal Lazarus. The name is Niram Shosalahi Asafasa. The collect for Lent from the book. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.